Welcome to the Devin Nunes Podcast. Breaking through the political noise, separating fact from fiction. From the San Joaquin Valley, the breadbasket of the solar system. Here is your host, Devin Nunes. Welcome back, everybody, to the Devin Nunes Podcast. Recently, if you've been following me, I've been talking a lot about Parler. I've been talking about the tech oligarchs and tech tyranny and how so many of us are now being regu regulated on the internet superhighway that years ago, we all wanted to come to the public square. Everybody was able to use it. But since the 2016 election, we know what's happened. What's happened is, is that Google, Facebook, Twitter, they've been unfortunately regulating the internet. So a lot of us uh, can't be there free and have our uh, opportunity and our right to uh, exercise the, our, our First Amendment rights of free speech. Uh, but this week, uh, you've heard me talk about Parler a lot, but we have on the CEO of Parler, I want to welcome him on, John Mates is here. And John, thanks so much, uh, first of all, for being on the show, but also uh, for what you've done. Congratulations. It's, a, it's, it's been very successful. I like interacting uh, on Parler a lot, but welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me on here. So, so what I like to do uh, is, is I like to, to call Parler when I explain it to folks, is I kind of say it's, it's kind of the best of all the social media sites because you can put pictures on there like Instagram. You can put videos on there. Many of you know that, that sometimes you know, the videos won't play depending on what site you're on. If you try to post something on Twitter, uh, YouTube videos won't work. On your site, all the, all the videos work. And then also you can write up to what? Almost like a thousand, uh, you can use a thousand characters. So you can yes. write you know, really almost, uh, almost a short story. So it's a very, uh, it's a very effective tool. Um, it's amazing what you've done, John. I know you're sitting there in, in Las Vegas, created out of Las Vegas, but I also know, uh, and I don't know you personally, other than just, uh, just kind of uh, th through the media and what I've heard, but I know you originally, like me, you started in California, you started in tech, and you realized like, okay, number one, I gotta get out of California, which we talk a lot about that uh, mm -hmm. on the show. Uh, for business reasons, to start a new business, you went to Nevada, but but walk the listeners through. How did you first come upon the concept of hey, we need to have an open, free space where everybody can come on and, and, and be part. Every American, every person around the globe has a chance to to use the internet superhighway. Well, yeah, uh, it started in 2018. Basically, uh, we looked at Facebook and we looked at how everybody was interacting with news on there. And we realized that every time they tweak their algorithms, these companies would go up or go down by you know, millions of dollars in ad revenue. And we thought, this is a problem. Back then, the censorship issue was on the table, but it was kind of more of a fringe issue. It was more of like the Alex Joneses, and nobody wanted to stand up and defend them. Uh, so what we were really interested in defending at first was more the uh, publications. We wanted to keep news alive. And then as things kind of progressed, we saw Twitter get worse. And we made an early prediction in around the summer of 2018. We said, let's pivot and let's take these guys on because they're, this is gonna get really bad and it's gonna continue to get worse. And so, uh, so we actually decided to, uh, to pivot and take on Twitter. And, and I think that we can do a much better job than them too in the long run. I mean, there's a lot of growth, a lot of missed opportunities they haven't taken. And I, th I think we can do it, definitely can do it. Well, and you have a lot of uh, exciting features that that both that, that Twitter and Facebook uh, don't have, and maybe you can kind of just walk through what you know as you're as you're looking at this. What do you think your differential advantages are compared to those different sites? Yeah. Um, well, to kind of start, I think Twitter has kind of devolved into this hateful, nasty kind of place to be in general. Uh, all anyone has to do I is think, look at, look I, at your I would, posts. I would for sure uh, look at that. Yeah, you can just look at my Twitter feed. You'll see that for sure. I, uh, it's, it's awful. It's just an awful place. Well, and, and it's like, so if you look at the, the state of the country, too, you can see that everything's really, really hyper-partisan. You're either this way or this way, and everyone hates each other uh, unless they're on the same side. And so the way we kind of designed it is, you know, you get to moderate your own environment. So if somebody gets on there and they are... I don't know, spewing hate on your on your posts. You can pick off individual content comments. You can you can mute that person or block that person. You can kind of curate your own audience because that's your property. That's your that's your profile and you own it. Um, and everybody else owns their profile. And uh, the idea is that um, you know you keep the conversation on your terms. And so what ends up happening is people start getting more and more cordial because if you make people too angry, you end up getting moderated out of their space completely. 
Uh, and sometimes you don't even know you've been moderated out of their space, which is really cool. That's what we call our muting feature. And so these trolls will keep trolling you and they don't realize that no one's seeing it. Um, and so it's 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 a very interesting uh, it's a very interesting platform, very friendly. And what's really nice is that we're not partisan. So if you go on there and you make a statement, that statement's looked at objectively, not according to some uh, third party fact checker like Twitter has. I call those biased editorial boards. Uh, you know, not by some kind of uh, group of ideologically driven people. It's just clear rules. Don't don't be violent. Uh, don't post porn. No nudity. Um, all right, follow, you know, you, follow the you know fo follow federal and and state yeah. laws uh, that yeah. like anybody would have to do. Yes, the FCC is we use the FCC a lot for uh, for our guidelines. Mm -hmm. Basically, if you uh, remember a few weeks ago with Trump's executive order, uh, the rules that they were outlining in their executive order basically describe our platform and and the way that we operate. Now, I remember back when Facebook first started, one of the things that was really nice about it is is that you followed your friends and you you'd have friends that you knew from from high school, grammar school, uh, your neighbors. But one of the, the one of the great, the best things about Facebook was is it it posted in order. Mm -hmm. So like as you went back and you wanted to check and see, oh, okay, what 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 happened yesterday? You could kind of just kind of roll back and you'd eventually just go through uh, mm -hmm. in order by which someone posted something. Mm -hmm. And it was so nice. I mean, nowadays you get on Facebook, you know, if you don't specifically go seek out one of your old friends, you're not gonna find it at yeah. all. And yeah. I know on your site, um, it's just in order. There's no games. There's no algorithms. You're not you're not mm. deleting anybody off. It's all just there, yeah. and it just goes in chronological order, right? Yeah, and you can see the effects uh, on how content goes viral or doesn't go viral on Parler differ wildly from the way it works on Twitter and Facebook as a result. So when you post something, it goes in there. It goes in everybody who follows you. It goes in their feed exactly where you'd expect it to in chronological order. Uh, Facebook and Twitter realized that um, you know a while ago that hey as you make content, as you post content, not every person you follow you care about equally. And that was Twitter's idea, right? And they thought, well, okay, and Facebook, and they get, you know, they, they probably had a meeting somewhere I envisioned in a conference room in, in the Valley, and they said, you know, I think we know better what content people want to see than they do, and so we'll reprioritize it to make it more interesting for them. And that was horrible. And so at Parler, we looked at that and we said, that's wrong. If you subscribe to someone's content, you should get it in the order in which it was received. Um, and so it's a, it's a different style of engagement. And so you'll notice that you posted something and it might be dead for a few hours or it might go viral instantly, but then if the right person picks it up, it's just all over the place. Uh, and it's very interesting. And you don't have to be a famous uh, on Parlor to get attention. It just kind of everything flows around. Uh, it's really nice. Right, because nobody's, nobody's putting in the algorithms that are almost yes. like, uh, you know, they act as, I like to say they act as funnels. Uh, one of the things that I talk a lot now is 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 that, and I know you're nonpartisan there there at Parler, but one of the the things is is that, you know, it it wasn't enough for 90% of the media to be extreme left. Uh, that mm. didn't work in 2016, and Trump was able to win because I believe at least that was before they got really sophisticated at the algorithms on Facebook and Twitter, um, that that would really you know stop people from being able to see when Trump would go. You know, Trump would post all of his rallies on Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. And people be able to see him. Well, you know, nowadays, you know, good luck in finding some of that information. If yeah. people would copy some of that information, that would never be seen. You know, people were just regulated by what they can see. And you know, that's, you know, that's the best thing is is I know if I post something, I have the confidence in Parler now mm -hmm. that that whether people pick it up or don't pick it up, I know you're not going to be putting in, um, you know, a check valve, so to speak, mm -hmm. right? You're not going to be blocking it off. It, it, it either gets picked up or it doesn't, and it's there in the order by which it which yes. it goes. And I've noticed that, you know, sometimes um, you can read what you call it uh, echo, so you can echo mm -hmm. it again, and then, you know, sometimes that'll pick up more, uh, more people will be able to see it. Yeah. Um, how did you get the idea of, you know, because I think the, the really nice thing about it is, is that that you can put a video or a picture and then do a nice description. Where did that, was that just a concept that some of you, some of you guys in the, your programmers came up with? Well, I just kind of went, what do I want to see? I want to see big pictures and I want to see big videos. The thing that I always hated about some social media platforms is you see either a big picture and a big video, but then you don't have any, you have this tiny description, you got to squint and I've got good vision and even I had to squint, you know, on Instagram, for example, going, what is this person saying? And then you realize it's always something stupid anyway, so you don't really care about it. Mm -hmm. And then you go to Twitter and you, you see they put some text on there and the box for the graphics are all tiny and, you know, kind of shoved in the corner. 
And uh, so I was like, well, why don't we just mix both of them and give them the text and the graphics? Uh, and then we did the same thing with news articles, too. And so publications that came on, and uh, uh, for example, the uh, Washington Times, uh, they have an editorial section that's on there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they noticed that they get far higher click rates on Parler than any other social media uh, that they have. And it's because we have these big graphics. You see the big graphic, they have their text on there. It's, it's basically an inviting link to get information. And so uh, that's why I like it, because it's, it's much prettier and it's nicer, in my opinion. Yeah, and, and it, it appears like uh, no matter what size, um, whether you're on a desktop or uh, or your iPhone or or, or or an iPad, no matter what size, um, you know, so it's kind of user friendly for all all ages, so to speak, right? Yes, and I, I mean, I have an accessibility setting uh, on the iPhone and Android. They have accessibility settings. I turn the font way down because I like the smaller fonts, but it's really meant so that anybody can and use it. And um, I just uh, I really enjoy the experience. I haven't liked any other social media. The only other one that I actually even liked remotely was Instagram, and even that, it just didn't cut it for me. The conversations weren't great. I got, I think, I only had troll accounts. I never really did the whole real social media thing, um, but I always got banned. So I was like, okay, this is no fun. Every time I make a point, I get banned. So. Well, that's what, so. So that's actually a good segue. And one of the things I want to talk about. One of the things that 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 uh, the, the concepts that you're that you're developing, and it seems like you've got it pretty well figured out, is that mm -hmm. um, you you get a badge. So if you are yes. that, that person, if you walk through kind of your, how, how you start an account, if you get a badge, what those, what those badges mean, because I think that's kind of nice. So it kind of helps limit the fake news so that you know if, if it's me there and there's a badge that, that it's been authenticated as me and people mm -hmm. can see that versus you know, some fake accounts that you know, would pretend to be a news organization or would pretend to have some news. Can you, can you walk us through yeah, we, how, we you, have how a, you develop the badge? Uh, am I calling it right? Is it badges? Yeah, no, we call them badges. Yeah, I mean, we, we started off with just uh, with one at first, and it was a red badge. And the reason that we gave these badges out is we wanted to say this is a real person, this isn't a bot, and, you know, this is their primary account. And uh, then we realized, you know, when we started looking at it, we thought, you know, Twitter has this badge system, and so does Facebook, I think, and Instagram. They have this, like, this is a real person, or this is the person that's some kind of celebrity, and it has some kind of status symbol attached to it on these other platforms. And this is really a classist structure. If you don't have a badge on those platforms, you're not going to get seen, nobody's going to engage with you, and it's hard to get your content to get picked up. And so it became this, like, super, you know, uh, I guess luxury item that you can get, this badge. So we thought, you know what, let's just let everybody do it. The whole point is to give uh, validity that this is a real person. So anybody can, once it's optional too, it's not like a requirement, but anybody can, you know, scan their driver's license and we'll give them a badge. As long as their face matches the picture, we give them a badge, then we dump all the data because we believe in data privacy. We're really, really strict about data privacy. Um, that's one of our things. Besides free speech, it's data privacy. Uh, so we dump the data for the ID, we dump their name, we dump their address, everything gets thrown out. Once We just keep a picture so we know that that person is who they say they are. Um, and they get this badge. And so then when you see people on the platform, they can have a, a red badge. That means they're, they got verified. You have a gold badge. That means um, they're a high profile individual, accurate name, accurate everything they are, who they say they are. You've got blue badges for um, uh, media outlets. So if it's Breitbart, they're going to have a dark blue badge. Um, and then you have uh, parody. So you'll see like a little purple badge once in a while with like Joker horns and stuff on it, which means it's like a, you know, a parody account. There's a fake parody Devin Nunes on there too. <laughs> what a surprise! Shocking. No, no, I'm not shocked. <laughs> but what, but what's the because uh, because you've got the yellow. So I'm a yellow badge. So what does that mean? What's um, that badge? means you. So yellow badge is somebody who. That means I'm about ready to get banned. I'm at my last <laughs> yellow like caution. Don't don't look at this guy. I'm it's uh, our our definition is. You've been mentioned by three different publications that reached 10 million households uh, in the last six months. That's our definition. Okay. Um, basically a prominent individual. Okay. How do you get a green badge? What's a green badge, Dan? We don't have a green one yet. I want to I come up with more and more badges. We've got a rocket badge for people who joined in 2018. I saw so that. I barely missed it. I joined in like 19, man. You should, you should up it a couple months so I could get a rocket <laughs> badge. <laughs> We've got a lot of people that are trying to like weasel their way into rocket badges. <laughs> okay. All right. I won't ask you again. I'll, I'll be happy with that. And, and what does the, the red badge mean? That's kind of the standard one. It's, um, it just means that this is a real person. This is a primary account. Real so that's kind of your standard. Box. That's your standard one. Anybody that gets on there, 
as long as they prove who they are, they get the red badge. Yes. Yeah, I like that because you know then you at least know whoever you're dealing with is, is a real person. And it seems to me, um, you know, knock on wood, I'm sure you're trying to monitor this, but you don't seem to have a lot of the bot farms. And can you walk our listeners through and viewers through how do you, and I don't want you to give them any trade secrets, but but how do you manage the bot farm thing? Because you know, you know, clearly Twitter's terrible at it because Twitter's just full of bot farms. Sometimes I think that, you know, half of the the users on Twitter are are fake. But it seems to be like most of the people on on Parler are engaged. At least the people that follow me, and the, you know, they don't tend to be like you know putting wild things on there. You know, like a lot of times you'll they'll get on there and say, you know. If you want to make you know fifty thousand dollars in a week, call oh, this that number. That stuff's nasty. Right? That stuff's yeah. so hard to keep on top of. By the way, uh-huh. uh, we do a really good job of it, but it's it's pain. Uh, we we've put a lot of effort into into bots. Um, we'll see. They're going to come. They're going to try to take advantage of the platform. Um, it's already happening on your profile, but very very little. They're not really getting in very much because we've got a lot of barriers to entry. Um, and we've so like one of the things that we do is when you sign up, it's not easy for a robot to get on. It makes it a little bit more difficult for a person to get on, but at least the barrier to entry is a little bit more difficult than say like Twitter or Facebook. Uh, you got to have a phone number on there. We don't we do not do anything with this data, by the way, because we, we're all about data privacy. But like uh, you sign up, you need a phone number. So it sends you a text message. That slows down the bot. It makes it more difficult for them. Of course, they can get through that, but they have to be more sophisticated. We also have a CAPTCHA that's very difficult to read. Uh, we were actually tweaking that this morning to make it a little bit easier for people. And we were like comparing it, trying to hack our own CAPTCHAs. <laughs> but um, uh, the idea is that it's difficult for a bot to get in. And that's at least a first barrier to entry. And then once you're in, you've got varying levels of verification. So if you get a badge, uh, at, you know, it's hard to get a badge. We have to manually go through and verify the identity of these people. You know, we compare the pictures and everything, make sure it's not like a deep fake or something. Uh, and uh, it's just very hard. Um, and if we start getting bot activity, we'll actually do something about it. I'm convinced that these other platforms go, oh my God, there's a, or sorry, oh my gosh, there's a, there's a bot going after this person. You know, uh, wait, what's their political bias? Okay, this person right. believes the, okay, so we'll let that bot go. But this yeah. person, we're going to take care of those. So um, in my opinion, I think these other I have sites some experience at that. Time. Yes, you have some yeah. experience in that. Yeah. They don't seem to mind when somebody has 10 accounts going after you. But uh, but if you if you call out Nancy Pelosi and you say a mean thing about her, um, totally unacceptable and you'll get banned. Well, what gets me is that, uh, you know, because I'm, you know, in the intelligence world and, and you know, you know, back before we started just running and turn the House Intelligence Committee into the House Impeachment Committee, I won't go there with you because I know you're not political, but before that, you know, there were people that I like to follow uh, that were around the globe because they were they were really good reporters. They were in deep, and so if I wanted to figure out what was going on with Al Qaeda somewhere or mm-hmm. radical terrorism, um, I would you know I'd follow those people. And what I noticed was is that you know they would get regulated, and so I couldn't mm-hmm. even see their content without going to a desktop or something. You know, even though they'd mm-hmm. be putting up you know really important content for me to learn from, right yeah. about what's going on around the, around the globe. But however, if you're the if you're the dictatorship of Iran, uh, mm-hmm. uh, no problem. You know, you can put whatever yeah. the hell you want on any, any of these sites. I mean, it's it's absolute madness. We, and and you know, now I, that you mentioned, I don't mind about you know if if uh, Iran or or any country around the world if they want to join any place and and say their piece, fine. But don't stop you know kind of citizen journalists or yes. or, oh, yeah. or journalists from being able to put stuff on on there that are maybe not what the government and dictatorship of Iran or China or Russia mm-hmm. want to have up there. And I don't know if you know, I don't know if you've probably even ran into them yet, but on Parler, we actually have a very large Iranian community. Uh, we the, the app's actually offered in, uh, in Farsi as well, because uh, Twitter keeps censoring the people who are speaking out against the government. So they got all frustrated and they said, you know, forget it, I'm going to go over to Parler. And so they started joining, which is very, very cool to see. Uh, we had the same thing happen in Saudi Arabia. We had the same thing happened uh, uh, in the UK just a few days ago. Um, Twitter seems to be taking sides in every geopolitical debate out there. They seem to be taking some kind of position. Uh, I don't know why they think it's okay to to become a political action committee on behalf of the entire world, mm-hmm. but um, uh, they seem to be doing this everywhere, and it's made a lot of people upset. That's I did not know that about the the that it's offered in different languages. That's that's quite interesting. The other issue I would say about the bot farms too is that. 
you know, eventually the the emperor has no clothes, right? Like if mm -hmm. you if you're a successful company and you take off and you're able to become to hold your own and become profitable, mm -hmm. um, you don't want fake bots on there, right? No, like you, you don't. don't want fake people because mm -hmm. you want to know when people come to advertise on there that and and I want to know as somebody that's using the platform. That that you know I'm not getting you know a uh, hundred uh, you know bots that then start tweeting stuff out you know I'm not getting real um, uh, a response to whatever it is that I'm posting on 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 the site. So the ads so, won't know if they're talking to a bot or they're talking with a person. Right. Uh, well, and so and I think that's part of the scam here, John. Honestly, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I, it, it baffles me why you would take a billion multi-billion dollar company uh, like these companies are. And I mean, they're really playing uh, Russian roulette. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. you're there in Vegas. You know, you can call it Russian roulette, or they're you know they're they're taking a one-time roll right on on the yeah. craps table. I mean, by doing this, and they're doing it with real people's money. You know, that's what I yes. keep saying. I don't want to get too much into my lawsuit against these tech companies, but 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 the bottom line is is that they are, you know, real people own these stocks that are out there. Mm. Uh, teachers, firefighters, police. Uh, Mom and pops, the retirement funds, they bought these, you know, they, whether they own it, uh, the stock outright, or they own it in some one of their, their retirement portfolios. You know, these mm. are real people, and these boards have a responsibility. And, you know, and, and I'm sorry, like, I think that a lot of these bot farms, you know, God only knows, you know, how much money they're ripping off from the advertisers to, you know, you're mm -hmm. advertising to people who don't even exist. Well, and, and, and I can't so, imagine that you would want that on your site. So Twitter has come out and said publicly, and I don't, this might be old news because it was about a year ago, but they said 20% uh, of their network is uh, bots. They openly admitted that, right? So that's an admission. I'm sure it's more than that. I'm sure the number is higher. But let's say it is 20%. Um, bots can act much quicker than people can. Uh, so they might make up, even though they're 20% of the people, they might make up 40% right. of the engagement. 40% um, of that ad revenue potentially is being sucked up for bots. And so anybody who understands basic economics, I'm a big Thomas Sowell guy. Uh, so if you understand basic economics, you go, you know, look, if you're not getting value for your money, right? So if you're paying money for ads and you're not getting value from these ads, uh, you've got to sell more ads and you got to sell them at a cheaper rate. Um, on Parler, people have noticed they're spending less money and they're getting more for their ads because there's real people actually uh, engaging with it. And mm -hmm. so we're able to actually raise our CPM up a little higher in other places because when people go in there to advertise, they're like, oh, wow, people are actually seeing this. They're getting clicks. Uh, so this content's going somewhere. Uh, our ad network is nowhere near as sophisticated at this point as these other platforms, but we're already seeing really good results with it just because of the authenticity behind the accounts, which is amazing. Well, that's great. Hey, you've been you've been great with your time, um, and, and and you know I hope that you'll come back on and, and talk about Parler and, and just so and we'll, we'll put your icon on the screen. Okay, great. Uh, hopefully, so. But it's 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 important. This is important because it's P A R L E R. Yes. Because there's another the app. Red app. Yeah, the red app. There's another app that that that's that's also uh, par called Parler with an O. Uh, but it's not you guys. So what do we have to, what's coming up next? Like give us a kind of a feel, anything exciting, any new, uh, um, anything, any new updates coming out uh, on, on the app? What do you, what do you so think? So hopefully the in the next 48 hours, we'll see, um, we're, we're pushing an update out for tipping. So content creators, because the whole thing behind our platform is not just free feeds, privacy, but we, we want people to monetize their own data. And so the idea is if you're a content creator, you should be able to make money on our platform. And so we're introducing tipping. And so a lot of people are getting banned off of Patreon and a lot of these other sites for raising money. Uh, and so we're going to say, look, if you want to raise money, you can do it on Parler. Just let them tip you. Say, hey, that's a cool post. Here's a buck. You know, that's kind of a cool oh, concept. Wow. So we're introducing that as a part of our advertising network. Um, and so that should be coming out soon, very soon. Well, that's very good, John. Well, well John Mates, everybody, uh, I really appreciate you coming on. And uh, Thank you. there's so many people out there. I can just tell you when I first got onto Parler, I had so many people that were so, they were thanking me. I didn't even mm. have people call my office and thank me for joining Parler uh, because they were such a, you know, and people, random people stopped me, you know, when I was at different events, you know, back in mm. kind of pre-COVID time uh, that I had joined Parler because they had been booted off all the other platforms. Yeah, and, well, and, and it's, it's the people that are suffering the most. It's not you or it's not President Trump. I mean, President Trump's being attacked quite a bit, but 
the people, I mean, thousands and thousands, if not millions of people being censored around the world by these platforms and no one's able to speak up for them. So you're probably a hero to a lot of these people who are going, you know, someone's actually do, you know, standing up for us. It's, well, it's yeah, and I'm just glad to be there and be there with the people and they have, you know, they can interact and post stuff on my on my side. And I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's kind of rather odd because for all these people that have been banned and kicked off of all the, the, the what I call the tech oligarchs, they sure are pretty damn nice. I mean, I'm not really sensing a lot of, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure why they got kicked off in the first place. I'm sure some will. Uh, mm. I'm sure somebody will break your rules. But but uh, the bottom line is, is that you're enforcing the rules on everybody the same. Yes. And you're keeping that public square open, which is what the law that Congress wrote in the mid-90s was intended to do. Uh, and I'm sorry, tech oligarchs, uh, you know, it's only a matter of time, but you can't keep regulating uh, the internet like, like they're trying to do. And thankfully, uh, Guys like you, John, uh, with your new company, with Parler, you're stepping up and you're showing how it's supposed to be done so that we can uh, live free in this country it's, and have the right to say uh, it's, it's what we essential. want. It's yep. essential, especially in a democratic republic. So, Absolutely. All right, All right John. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks a lot for being on. This Take is care. Devin Nunes. We will catch you on Friday. Thanks for listening to the Devin Nunes Podcast. We invite you to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And remember, you can download this podcast on iTunes or at DevonNunes.com. Storm clouds been gathering so long, I don't know. The darkness around us leaves no easy road. We started wondering if every road dead ends our dreams. It whips the dust up and rains pouring down. Good people struggling in started wondering if we even matter at all we'll take that hard road to happier days cause we kept our american faith now it's not our first trial by fire like this it's not the hard work We've got the power to save it all here in our hands We'll take that hard road to happier days Cause we kept our American faith As we We're already half the way there We'll take that hard road to happier days Cause we kept our American faith Paid for by Devin Nunes Campaign Committee.